Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. We left off with Muscle Bob Buff Pants here, and we're gonna see if we can do any Blades quests. Are you here to discuss your orders, Revan? Or is there something else you want? My orders were to just go do whatever I want and then come back when you think I'm ready, so... Ready for orders? Good. Go talk to Hasfat Antibalus at the Balmora Fighters Guild. Ask him what he knows about the Nereveran secret cult and the Sixth House secret cult. You'll have to do him a favor first, probably an ugly favor, but do it. Then get the information from Antibalus and report back to me. By the way, Hapspat is a student of Morwind history. Take the chance to get a little education, and I have a few history books in here. Help yourself. You're welcome to them. No point in being part of history if you're too ignorant to understand it. Um, why do you seem so concerned about who I am and my role in the history? <laughs> Hasfat Antibalus. He's Drillmaster of the Balmora Fighters Guild. He's lived in Morrowind all his life, knows the natives, and talks a lot with backcountry mercenaries. He thinks of himself as a scholar, and he's particularly interested in Dwemer ruins and artifacts. Some Dunmer believe that an orphan and outcast, a youth born on a certain day to uncertain parents, will one day unite all the tribes of the Dunmer. That sounds peculiar. Drive out the invaders of Morwind and reestablish the ancient laws and customs of the dark elven nations. They call this orphan and outcast the Nereverin, and say the Nereverin will be a reincarnation of the long dead Dunmer general and first counselor, Lord Indoril Nerevar. Orphan and outcast. Certain day. Uncertain parents. Hmm. Get the information about the Nereverin secret cult and the Sixth House secret cult from Hafsfat Antibalus, like I told you. So I think the Nereverin cult may be Ashlanders, and then the Sixth House is Dagoth Ur. A trusted informant says they're a secret cult associated with some strange events recently, and more important, my informant thinks these recent disturbances are related in some way to the Nereverin prophecies. Nereverin prophecies. The illiterate Ashlanders pass down their customs and history in the form of poetic verses. Among the things they preserve in verse are the dreams and prophetic visions of their wise women, in particular the verses that foretell the forthcoming of the Nereverin. But I don't know much about it, that's why I'm sending you to find out. Morwind History Jeanette's Sit's Little Book is a good place to start. I have a copy here. Take it. You might also look for On Morwind, the Imperial Province, by Aramanwe of Sunhold. Oh, you gave me a book. I don't know much about the Ashlanders. Most people say they are murderous savages, but most people are idiots. <laughs> I know they hate their settled Dunmer cousins almost as much as they hate Westerners. They must be tough to live in the Ashland. Think Outlanders can become members of the tribes. I don't know why anyone would want to. He can train me in speechcraft? Let's try it. Cool. Yeah. You know what? Since you smelled me, I think I'll stop at 14. Serene Leorain suggested I see Leros Uvain at the Caldera Governor's Hall and learn the Detect Enchantment spell. It shows where enchanted items are, both in enemies and in hidden locations. Oh, I didn't even see that journal update. When did that happen? The Spy Master has sent me to talk to Hapspat Antibalus at the Balmora Fighters Guild. I'm to ask him what he knows about the Nereveran secret cult and the Sixth House secret cult, and return to report to the Spy Master. First, I'll have to do some favor for Antibalus, then he'll give me the information that the Spy Master wants. When I asked about Morrowind history, Caius gave me a copy of A Short History of Morrowind, and suggested I look for a copy of On Morrowind. Ah, oh, and I'm over encumbered. You butt. So he gave me A Short History of Morrowind. How how short is it though? Eleven pages. Um okay, let's read it. From the introduction. Led by the legendary prophet Veloth, the ancestors of the Dunmer, exiles from Altmer cultures in present day Somerset Isle, came to the region of Morwind. In the earliest times, the Dunmer were harassed or dominated by Nord Sea Raiders. When the scattered Dunmer tribes consolidated into the predecessors of the modern Great House clans, they threw out the Nord oppressors and successfully resisted further incursions. Good for them! The ancient ancestor worship of the tribe 
was in time superseded by the monolithic tribunal temple theocracy, and the Dunmer grew into a great nation called Resdane. Resdane was the last of the provinces to submit to Tiber Septum. Like Black Marsh, it was never successfully invaded, and was peacefully incorporated by treaty into the empire as the province of Morrowind. Almost four centuries after the coming of the Imperial Legions, Morrowind is still occupied by Imperial Legions, with a figurehead Imperial King, though the Empire has reserved most functions of the traditional local governments to the ruling councils of the five great houses on Vardenfell District. In Third Era 414, Vardenfell territory, previously a temple preserve under Imperial protection, was reorganized as an Imperial Provincial District. Vardenfell had been maintained as a preserve administrated by the temple since the Treaty of the Armistice, and except for a few great house settlements sanctioned by the temple, Vardenfell was previously uninhabited and undeveloped. But when the centuries-old temple ban on trade and settlement of Vardenfell was revoked by King of Morwind, a flood of imperial colonists and great house Dunmer came to Vardenfell, expanding old settlements and building new ones. The new district was divided into Redoran, Lalu, Tovani, and Temple districts, each separately administrated by local house councils or temple priesthoods, and all under the advice and consent of Duke Dren and the District Council in Everhart. Local law became a mixture of house law and imperial law in house districts, jointly enforced by house guards and legion guards, with temple law and imperial law enforced in the temple district by ordinators. The temple was still recognized as the majority religion, but worship of the Nine Divines was protected by the legions and encouraged by imperial cult missions. The temple district included the city of Vivek, the fortress of Ghost Gate, and all sacred and profane sites, including those bladed areas inside the ghost fence, and all unsettled and wilderness areas in Vardenfell. In practice, the district included all parts of Vardenfell not claimed for Redoran, Lalu, or Tovani districts. The temple stubbornly fought all development in the district and were largely successful. House Lalu, in combination with Imperial colonists, embarked on a vigorous campaign of settlement and development in the decades after reorganization. Balmora and the Ascadian Isles regions have grown steadily. Caldera and Pelagiad are completely new settlements, and all legion forts were expanded to accommodate larger garrisons. House Telvanni, normally conservative and isolationist, has become surprisingly aggressive in expanding beyond their traditional tower villages. Disregarding the protests of the other houses, the temple, the council, Telvanni pioneers have been encroaching on the wild lands reserved to the temple. The Telvanni council officially disavows responsibility for these rogue Telvanni settlements, but it is an open secret that they are encouraged and supported by ambitious Telvanni mage lords. Under pressure from the temple, conservative House Redoran has steadfastly resisted expansion in their district. As a result, House Redoran and the temple are in danger of being politically and economic economically marginalized by the more aggressive and expansionist Lalu and Tavani interests. The Imperial administration faces many challenges in the Vardenfell district, but the most serious are the Great House rivalries. Animosity from the Ashlander nomads, internal conflicts within the temple itself, and the Red Mountain Blight. Struggles between Great House Temple and Imperial interests to control Vardenfell's resources could at any time erupt into full-scale war. Ashlanders raid settlements, plunder caravans, and kill foreigners on their wild lands. The temple has unsuccessfully attempted to silence criticism and calls for reform within its ranks. But most serious are the plagues and diseased hosts produced by the blight storms sweeping out from Red Mountain. Vardenfell and all Morrowind have long been menaced by the legendary evils of Dagoth Ur and his ash vampire kin dwelling beneath Red Mountain. For centuries, the temple has contained this threat within the ghost fence. But recently, the temple's resources and... What? But recently, the temple's resources and will have faltered, and the threat from Red Mountain has grown in scale and intensity. If the ghost fence should fail, and hosts of blighted monsters were to spill out across Vardenfell's towns and villages, the Empire might have no choice but to evacuate Vardenfell District and abandon it to disease and corruption. Very interesting stuff, and all stuff that I've kind of heard before. But, let's go to the Fighters Guild, because that's where I have to go now. I'm back in the Fighters Guild to find Hap's Fat Ant Ballas. I figured I may as well sleep first, just to... No, yeah, let's just sleep 24 hours, just to regain my magicka and stuff. And I used a spell before to hopefully help increase my restoration, because it's very low. Has Fat Ant Ballas. Good day, Revan. So you're with Caius, eh? Caius wants information. Of course, there's a this for that involved. I require a favor first, and then I'll tell you what you want to know. 
Um, sixth house. You have a favor to do first. Then we can talk about the sixth house. The Reverend. You have a favor to do first. Morrowind history. I won't bore you blathering about history. That's what Caius is for. But if you're really interested, try on Morrowind, the Imperial Province. I have an extra copy you can have. What an adventurer like you really needs is a sense of current events. Who hates who? Where's trouble brewing? That's where opportunity lies for an outlander like you. That's fair. Alright, what's this favor? There are Dwemer ruins nearby, called Arkenthad. I need you to run over there and find me a little cube with a circular design and some symbols on one side. It's called a Dwemer puzzle box. Bring me back the Dwemer puzzle box and I'll tell you what you want to know. Uh, tell me about the Dwemer puzzle box. The little cube I'm looking for is about the size of a fist, maybe a little bigger. It will be made of a coppery metal with a circular design and symbols on one side, and some lined marks on the other sides. That's all I want. That little cube. Current events. The great houses hate each other. Theft, murder, assassinations, secret raids, standard stuff. The temple is trying to kill off a rebellious faction called the Dissident Priests. Ashlander nomads raid each other, attack traders and pilgrims. A secret cult is killing off Imperial citizens. All bad enough. The real problem, though, is the blight. Monsters and diseases. The natives say it comes from Red Mountain. It's been a local problem for years, but lately, it's gotten badly out of control. Arkenthad. The old Dwemer ruins at Arkenthad are extensive on the surface and underground. Head south out of town, past the Siltstrider port, then cross the bridges east over the Odai River. At the signpost, head north towards Caldera, Immediately on the right, see a signpost for Molagmar. Turn right and head uphill on an old road to cross an ancient Dormer bridge over Foyada Mamaya. The entrance to Arkenthad is on the east side of the Foyada, south of the bridge. Turn a crank on a pipe nearby to open the doors. Wow, that's so much. Disappearance of the Dwarves. The disappearance of the Dwarves predates imperial written records. Dunmer oral accounts record that the Dwemer were utterly destroyed by the gods for profane practices and impiety. Dwarven ruins are scattered across Tamriel, and weapons, armor, housewares, coins, and other items of Dwemer design are often found. But the circumstances surrounding the disappearance of the Dwarves remains one of Tamriel's greatest mysteries. Right, as I said, get me the Dwemer puzzle box from Arkenthad, and I'll tell you what you want to know. Now he gave me a book and I'm over encumbered. Okay, let's read this book. On Morrowind, the Imperial Province, by Aramanway of Sunhold. After the conquest of Hammerfell, Imperial legions massed along the northeastern borders of Cyrodiil, and invasion fleets prepared in Skyrim. Initially, though the Imperial legions and navy were widely considered undefeatable, House Endoral and the Temple Hierarchy proposed to resist the death. Redoran and Dress stood by Endoral, with Tovani remaining neutral. Lalu proposed accommodation. Contrived border incidents in Blackmarsh ended inconclusively, but the swampy terrain did not favor Legion and Navy coordination. Against the Legion's mast west of Silgred Tower in Craganmoor, and the Legion's west of Blacklight in Cormaris View, Morwind had pitifully small militias stiffened by small companies of veteran mercenaries and elite units of house nobles and temple ordinators and armigers. Further complicating matters was the refusal of Endoral, Dress, Lalu, and Tovani to garrison the western borders. Endoral and Dress proposed, rather than defend the western border, instead to withdraw to the interior and fight a guerrilla war. With Lalu advocating accommodation and Tovani remaining neutral, Redoran therefore faced the prospect of standing alone against the Empire. The situation changed radically when Vivek appeared in person in Vivek City to announce his negotiation of a treaty with Emperor Tiber Septum. Re reorganizing Morrowind as a province of the Empire, but guaranteeing all rights of faith and self-government. A shocked temple hierarchy, which apparently had not been consulted, greeted the announcement with awkward silence. Indoral swore that they would resist to the death with the loyal support of Dress, while Redoran, grateful for a graceful excuse to avoid facing the legions unsupported, joined with Lalu in welcoming the agreement. Tilvani, seeing which way the wind blew, joined with Lalu and Redoran in supporting the treaty. Nothing is known of the circumstances of the personal meeting between Septim and Vivek, or where it took place, or the preliminaries which must have preceded the treaty. The public reason was to protect the identities of the agents involved. In the West, speculation had occurred around the role of Zurin Arctis in brokering the agreement. 
In the east, rumors suggest that Vivek offered Numidium to aid in the conquest of the Altmer and Somerset Isle in return for significant concessions to preserve self-rule, house traditions, and religious practices in Warwind. The Lord High Counselor of the Grand Council, Anne Indoral, refused to accept the treaty, and refused to step down. He was assassinated and replaced by Alalu. House Lalu took the opportunity to settle some old scores with House Indoral, and a number of local councils changed hands in bloody coups. More blood was shed in these inter-house struggles than against the Imperial Legions during Morwen's transition from an independent nation to a province of the Empire. The generals of the Legions had dreaded an invasion of Morrowind. The Dunmer were widely regarded as the most dreadful and fanatic foes, further inspired by their temple and clan traditions. The generals had not grasped the political weakness of Morrowind, which Emperor Tiber Septum recognized and exploited. At the same time, given the tragic depopulation and destruction experienced by the other provinces conquered by Septum, and the swift and efficient assimilation of Morrowind into the imperial legal systems and economy with relatively small impact on lower and upper classes of Morrowind citizens, the tribunal also deserves some credit <laughs> for rec for recognizing the hopelessness of Morrowind defense and the chance of gaining important concessions at the treaty table by being the first to offer peace. Man, run on sentences. By contrast, many Andoral nobles chose to commit suicide rather than submit to the Empire, with the result that the House was significantly weakened during the period of transition, guaranteeing that they would lose much of their influence and power to House Lalu, whose influence and power was waxing in it and its enthusiastic with its enthusiastic accommodation with the Empire. The temple hierarchy most the Temple Hierarchy more skillfully managed their loss of face, remaining aloof from political struggles and earning the goodwill of the people by concentrating on their economic, educational, and spiritual welfare. Um, I need to drop something though. Why is this book so heavy? Let's drop all this rat meat. I don't need that. Wait, what did this guy want me to do again? When I asked Haspat about Morrowind history, he gave me a copy of the book. Cool. I need to do a favor for Haspat before he'll tell me what I need to know. I'm to go to a Dwemer room called Arkendad. I'm supposed to find a little cube with a circular design and some symbols on one side. He called it a Dwemer puzzle box. When I bring the cube back to Antibalus, he'll tell me what I need to know. I like that I called him by his first name, but then the game calls him by his last name. It says Caldera is this way. Could I have taken this way to Caldera? Yeah, I guess it would have come up around this way probably. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if I went this way if I would run to that uh, bandit camp for Ada Wavebreaker. So this is that big bridge I've been walking under. Are those ballista or are they just carts? Oh, well, those are just carts. Who are you? You might not be friendly. That answers my question. I was going to save but I think you're just gonna fight me. Oh, I'm saved at the guild. Uh, that's not a bad thing. I'll do it. Oh, you got fit. Nope, you've got magic. Oh, and that's a skeleton. You look like Caius. I'm just gonna not fight that skeleton. Hopefully if I kill you, the skeleton will die. Does it? It does. Haha, <laughs> genius. My name's Snowy Granius. I don't know why you had to just attack me. Ooh, but I'll take your emerald. Some gold. Some more gold. Some more gold. You're pretty poor, but I don't know why you attacked me. Looks like bamboo. Actually, wait, that really looks like bamboo. What the heck? Is this even their asset? <laughs> hey, look, I found the place. It's literally right past the bridge. He said I have to turn a crank to open the door. Dwarven Crank. <gasps> That's so cool! I wonder if talking to him spawns this crank. Wait, did it close again? Wait. Oh! Interesting. I wonder if I'll be able to get back out. Huh. Well, with that being said, I'm going to end that one there. going to start the next one with, uh, I guess our first actual dungeon. Wow, it only took 20 episodes. Oh, no, we've technically done, like, a, a dungeon. The 
the egg cavern, I guess. Egg mine. But this this will be a real dungeon. We're going to be doing a real dungeon next episode. So stay tuned, everybody, for the next episode of The Elder Scrolls Three: Morrowind. Anyway, uh, yeah. Bye.